A manhunt is currently underway for the suspect in last night's deadly mass shooting in Maine. The attack killed at least 18 people and injured more than a dozen others. Police say the suspect targeted two separate locations. The first was a bowling alley, the other a bar and grill. And as we come on the air, police are urging people in the area to shelter in place as they search for the person responsible. Officials identified the suspect as 40-year-old Robert Card. He's a member of the U.S. Army Reserve. Police issued an arrest warrant for eight counts of murder. And the reason it's eight counts because 10 people have not yet been identified. As those people are identified, uh, the counts will probably go to the total of 18. Um, he should be considered armed and dangerous. Based on our investigation, we believe this is someone that should not be approached. Our own Elaine Quijano joins us now from on the ground in Lewiston, Maine. Elaine, what more do we know about Card and the ongoing manhunt? Uh, well, basically, you outlined it right there. Um, we know that a vehicle belonging to Robert Card was found in a nearby town of Lisbon. We're here in Lewiston, and behind me, I should mention, is the checkpoint just down that road um, is the road to the bowling alley where one of those shootings took place. Uh, Card, though, as you heard authorities say, is considered armed and dangerous, 40 years old. And right now, authorities are saying uh, that if residents should encounter him, they should absolutely not approach uh, because he is considered armed and dangerous and their search is intensifying. And you've been in Lewiston all morning, Elaine. We've been watching your reporting as you bring us all the latest. Tell us though, what you're hearing from people in the area and what's, this, what's the scene like now there? Yeah, you, you can imagine, Lana, just a great deal of anxiety and fear right now. I talked to one resident who lives near the bowling alley and said that when he first got the call from the neighbors that something was going on there, he wasn't sure what to think. And then all of a sudden, the alerts for an active shooter started coming in. He was terrified. He has a nine-year-old son. He said, this is a kind of big, small town. It's the kind of place where people don't necessarily lock their doors at night. It is a tranquil community where a lot of people know each other. And in fact, he was telling us that he knows of at least one of the people who was killed at the bowling alley. Somebody he said was a really nice guy, um, very sort of gentle spirit, and um, he was in disbelief, really. He was in shock that, uh, that this had even happened at all. So even as residents here, you know, are, are starting to kind of come to grips with what happened, the search is still going on. So there is a very palpable fear um, a very palpable sense of anxiety here as authorities continue to try to track down the suspect. All right, Elaine, thank you. We'll continue checking in with you. Richard Esposito is a CBS News contributor and a former deputy commissioner of the NYPD. He joins us now. Richard, tell us what officials are doing to try and secure the area and keep residents safe. They've, they've done several things. First, they've advised people do not approach this suspect. Second, everyone, please shelter in place. That means lock your doors, lock your windows, stay away from your windows. Um, one of the things that could happen is this suspect could get into a family's house, keep them, and hide from the police. So that's, that's one of the things they want to avoid while they're conducting the manhunt. Um, and those are two of the basic things to keep people safe while they continue to hunt him down. Oh, and the suspect is considered armed and dangerous. That's the reason for this lockdown. He's been identified as part of the U.S. Army Reserves. I'm, I'm wondering, Richard, how all of this factors into the search. Well, if you look at his posture and how he holds his weapon, it's clear that he knows what he's doing. It's clear that he has um, magazines that will hold a lot of bullets. And... Um, while he hasn't had any advanced training, although that's what they initially thought, he's had military training. That makes him more lethal than if he did not have it. Um, and the weapon is a battlefield-tested weapon, though it's now viewed as a sporting rifle. That's, that's what it was. That's what it was created for. Um, we know he has or possibly has access to other vehicles besides the one um, that he abandoned, um, possibly motorcycles. And um, they're on the lookout for those as well um, as they hunt him down. 
Well, and this area is heavily wooded. It's also possible that he's no longer in the local area. That's why other communities have been put on lockdown. But I'm wondering, with your extensive expertise, if you have any sense of how long this manhunt may last. You know, sometimes manhunts can go on for weeks. Um, the weather's pretty warm, even in Maine. Maine is a rugged and very sparsely populated state. Um, so if he knows what he's doing and he has the a decent jacket and some food, he can um, stay on the loose for a while. Um, the things that the police have, you know, license plate readers, GPS ability. Um, if he goes low tech, they lose some of that ability and they don't have the ability to blanket the state. And given how dangerous he has already proved himself to be, how are law enforcement officials likely to interact with him? How does this most likely you know, end? The, sure. You know, their objective is to bring him into custody, put him on trial for what will ultimately become probably 18 murders. Um, but what's his objective? Does he want to have a death by police? Uh, will he engage in a shootout? And that changes the whole dynamic. Um, they will not go in to shoot to kill unless he um, forces their hand. And 18 murders, as you mentioned, the number of confirmed dead at this moment, though there are still 13 others who are in uh, precarious condition, and we're thinking of all of them. Richard Esposito, thank you. Thank you.